there was there was this kind of thing. This is one of the one of the regular kind of arguments that goes around there. Or people mock these people. Um, this was posted by Kasim Rashid Esquire. I think it's actually an Esquire, uh, but in, he says, okay, it's a tweet. that says, "Maga Boomer, at your age, I paid off college and bought a house with hard work." Millennials, at your age, college was three percent of median salary. Now it's twenty percent. And median yeah. home inc- home was seventeen k. Now it's three hundred and sixty three k. The top marginal tax rate was 70%. Now it's 37%. You worked hard and then closed the door behind you. So what do you think about that? Because I have I have some thoughts on this where it's like, yeah, a general thing, but then the response is also blah. Yeah, because, I mean, I think the point about, like, the percentages makes sense. And that was the, what I was trying to explain to that male relative. Like, yeah, you paid a fraction of the price. You know, you paid off your college in short time. You got a good paying job. Yeah, of course. But it's like... It's not like that now and telling kids it's still like that, go to college, that's what's creating the mess. But at the same time, like it does also, you know, they use in business language, uh, what is it? Um, caveat emptor, buyer beware. I think like there has to be a bit more of that too, because it's like, understand that these colleges are out for themselves. You know, I mean, I, mean, I made mm-hmm. the point several times in our cracks in the ivory tower series, like I don't see universities as these like, and the people who work in them are these, these, these like heroic figures that put aside self-interest because they care about you. It's like yeah. they have a, they have an agenda same as anyone else. It's just do your agendas coincide or is it are they, you know, slipping in some lies because they want to enrich themselves at your expense? And then I also add on that the banks are guaranteed the loans. Of course, the government wants the people in power want you to vote for them, all those other factors. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing. There's no such thing as not-for-profit uh, education. Not, there's no not-for-profit anything that happens in in society yeah. in, in actuality. Uh, you see some charities, but even there's actual profit of somebody feeling better about themselves that they gave charity, yeah. even if you discount the tax write-off in most cases. Okay, so with, with, with something like this, first of all, I I think I I personally know people. We, we know some people. We met some people in New York City. They end up actually leaving New York City, but it's probably part of why it's people like Kasim Rashid who agrees to things like this and call people mega boomers don't really interact with people like this because they leave the places where people like Kasim Rashid live. Uh, they they met in they met through a philosophy group uh, in New York City. They were younger. They were in their twenties. I think. Uh, the, the guy was first generation from, I mean, actually, I think he was born abroad and he was, became an American on my dream, first generation. But anyway, they moved to somewhere in the South South Carolina and now they eventually moved to, um, I think, somewhere in West Virginia, have a kid, yeah. bought a house. They're in their 20s. And yeah. they paid for college, both of them. Like, it, it, it's so, that's still happening. I think majority of the people, as you mentioned, it's like despite being despite making up only 13 percent of the college degree population, graduate degree holders make up 56 percent of the student loan debt. I think yeah. most people wouldn't realize that it's actually that amount of money. They might think, OK, there's not that many people with graduate degrees, but it's the amount of actual money that these people take out. So there are still a lot of schools that have single digit percent it might not be up to like 10 percent, but you can go to community colleges for two years and then you can go to a four or four year to finish it up there's different ways you can actually get to the situation you can of course get scholarships if you actually yeah. qualify for the actual school and things like this so there's ways to get your, your there's many, very many ways to get your actual income for your average for for pretty much most degrees that don't pay like petroleum engineering, you're not going to find a single percent di- digit of median salary for that because of the amount of earnings that's in there. But you're also not going to find a single digit percentage. You might not find one for like some esoteric type of Greek historical like yeah. way women were raised. That that kind of stuff may also be some very niche type of thing that's offered by only two or three colleges. So if you're going to go there, they're going to be able to charge you like Twenty thousand dollars, aka a semester, things like that. So if you if you're going out for that, that's a different thing. So when you're talking about this, first of all, people do pay it off in their twenties. Second, there are cheap schools out there you can actually find it. As for the taxation, what does it have to do with college or home ownership in this situation? Like you can tell this somebody who's a leftist, they just want to throw that taxation in there. And also, what percentage of people back in the day, in the boomer times, were actually going to college? What were they going to college for? What was the actual level of admission to the college? Like, what were the standards? They probably still had IQ tests back then where you're like, yeah, we're going to give you an IQ test to see if you can actually well, afford the school. I, w- I want to get into that as the conversation yeah. goes on. Yeah. All right. So there's, there's, there's things like that. So that's definitely a difference with it. it it's so the, if you can say, like, okay, they sh- they know, how do they close the door behind them? Someone like Kasim Rashad, 
I think he, Rashid, who he's talking to, I think is people on the political left. Maybe it's someone on the political right. I don't know. But he's, he's talking about this kind of stuff. Like, okay, so if you're saying they close the door, how did they close the door? Did, did they go into colleges and close the door? No, they, some of these boomers are still in there. But if it's the MAGA boomers, people more on the right, I don't think they're that involved in the schooling indoctrination complex. No. If you're saying they voted in politicians and did negative things, we'll get into a, <laughs> into a short discussion about some of the things that people like Joe Biden did. So yes, if some of these people in that boomer age, let's take the MAGA out of it, voted in politicians and that set up the policies and went to the Fed and did all these things that have just mucked up the entire system. If they've done that, have the millennials actually been shown to have a different voting pattern to have better politicians? No, the millennials came in too and continued this crap. So miss me with this nonsense of saying, oh, it was different in the boomer times. And the, no, because the boomer times bought into the American dream, taught the American dream to the kids, sent their kids to the school and indoctrination complexes that brought up the kids. They should be better as parents and more more aware and more into their kids, what's happening to the kids and teach them other ways. And there's still a vast majority, like we mentioned, 13% hold 56% of the student loans. So majority of Americans don't have student loans. So you can be part of those people. So I just I just want to dispense with that. For good in this conversation, this whole idea that it's a majority type of thing where like most people fall for this. No, most Americans, despite the schooling indoctrination complex, despite all the policy goals, despite all the guarantees, despite the promises, most Americans have seen through that nonsense. So if you want to pretend that, oh, we have the most educated voter and then we're the Democrats, we're the left, we're the ones who support student loan forgiveness, yet at the same time, let's drop that, uh, let's drop the, the voting age to 16. We have the most educated voters. This, you can, these voters were fooled, they were fooled, but then, when they're voting for us, they haven't been fooled by voting for us. It, it, it's absurdity. Oh, they, they can chop their breasts off and no, no, they're but, oh, they, they can't understand what's happening with with a student loan. It's 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 just a whole mix of just nonsense that yeah. I want to dispense with. That most people don't fall for the student loan debt trap, especially that top level of hundred. Thank you for listening. This has been a clip from an actual longer recording that I'll try to leave a link to on the screen or somewhere around here where you're listening to this. Peasants. 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 Okay. Okay.